Welcome to Carlos and Lisa. I'm Lisa Remillard. And I'm Carlos Amesquitz. Nice to have you with us today. You know, you're never supposed to talk about politics and religion at the dinner table, right? Correct. Never. It used to be very inappropriate to right. do that. Don't talk about those things. Now, not so much. <laughs> but what about politics and religion when it comes to your marriage or your relationship? Mm -hmm. Well, a new study actually shows that Americans would rather put up with a spouse with a different religion than a spouse with a totally different political view. Seriously, in fact, 30% of Americans are married to someone from a different religion, and only 10% say they're willing, willing to marry someone from the opposite political party. Isn't that interesting? Wow. Well, I guess, I mean, I guess because our, politi our, our politics have become so divisive mm -hmm. that it's just an extra, str marriage is hard enough, I yeah. would imagine. Like, it was hard enough, so I don't think you should add the political stress on top of it. I, yeah, it's, it's interesting why you would ever marry somebody who's not in line with you politically, but... But, but like, but they would be more willing to marry someone but with But you know that religion. when you're dating, but you know that when you're dating, uh, don't you? Don't you find yeah. stuff out, what your politics are, you what your should. religion is, you know, what your background is, do you have anything in common, is this going to work, blah, blah, blah. Right. All those things that kind of check them off. But in your, I mean, at least in my brain, you would think that the religion conversation would be a tougher one to have than politics. You would think, well, that's reasonable and we could come to a, but apparently you can't come yeah, to yeah. a meeting of the minds when well, it comes to politics. I've been I've been going I've gone to a dinner party once when people started talking about Donald Trump. Oh. And the spouses started arguing and I was oh. like, whoa, where'd oh. that come from? Oh, it gets aggressive. Yeah, it's pretty scary. Okay, so we asked <laughs> uh, a family law attorney, Lene Alley de Rutter, to come in and talk about this. You have seen a lot of relationship demises <laughs> in your time, Lene. So let's talk about this study. So it's funny, Carlos, you said it, you know, wouldn't you know what your your political um, align, what your what party you're aligned with before you got married? Of course you would. It's not, it's not, it's how they evolve through the marriage. So you have 10 year marriages, 15, 20, 30, and people evolve, their political ideologies, ideologies evolve. So now you're dealing with people who are kind of, you know, one person's going to one side of the fence and the other person's going to the other side of the fence. Mm -hmm. and. They're so passionate and intense about it, they can't reconcile. And you know, a lot of times what happens in divorce is that you start having differences like that and then you lose just you lose respect for that person. And oh, then boy. you associate them with somebody, for example, like Trump. I mean, Trump elicits such intense feelings. So you're associating your husband, oh, he thinks like Trump, he likes Trump, I can't stand him. And next thing you know, you can't you can't even look at your husband. You wish you wouldn't even breathe. You know, that's kind of how people get. <laughs> Wow. I mean, it's horrible. That's but intense. They just, it, it's so much emotion. And I think yeah. that our political environment is just magnifying that. It's. Mm -hmm. I saw something the other day that I read that it said it's the most polarized political environment since like the 60s. Right. Mm -hmm. and, well, and that's just manifesting into relationships and marriages that are already, already probably struggling, you know? Right. It's not, it's not like... I mean, I would imagine, I, the study didn't look that deep into it, but I wouldn't imagine like a totally happy, healthy marriage, you know, with this one political deviation would, you know, implode. I feel like that marriage probably has some other issues and just, yeah. you know, the politics might put you over the edge. Right, exactly. And so I think a lot of that comes down to communication because I can't, you know, even though we deal with a lot of mental health professionals, I'm not a mental health professional um, I'm not a political scientist, so it's hard to address some of the social aspect of that and from a right. statistical standpoint. But from what I see as a family law practitioner, you know, people are coming in and communication is a lot of times the biggest issue. They think it's finances and things like that, but it's the communication of all those issues. So now you're throwing this layer on there of this political issue in an environment that is so just so tumultuous and so divided and people have no tolerance or patience and the the interesting thing i think about the religion versus the um, politics is that with religion you, you do have those discussions when you begin and you know when you date and you get engaged and there's a lot more interfaith marriages and so that's become very acceptable and for some reason now with the heightened emotion and the heightened intensity around our political system um, or our political parties, you know, people can't even talk about it. 
right? You, know, you can't I, even I, talk about it. Really. I remember a, a while ago, uh, Lisa went to an elementary school and, and she was there for a debate. Oh, yes. And they were doing a debate in the, in the classroom, small children, and one of the things that they, they taught them was to respectfully disagree. Right. And and the the, right. the, the 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 idea of respecting somebody's opposite opinion was, I think, really at the crux of the discussion of how to mm -hmm. how to argue your point without being offensive or disrespectful. And and Lisa said that the little girl would say, "I respectfully, respectfully disagree," disagree. And, then, and then and then state the point. And it's funny as we get older right. and older, we seem to have lost the ability to respect other people for their opinion, whether you're married to them or not. Right, 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 exactly. Well, so take the Mueller hearings, you know, mm -hmm. try to have a couple that talks about that that's on opposite sides of the political fence. Right. I mean, you're, if you look to social media just with your friends and friends who have different opinions, it's blowing up with not just, you know, hey, I, I agree, I don't agree. It's very intense feelings, very, very intense feelings. And emotion is already high when you have people coming in for divorces, um, people on the edge thinking I might want a divorce. It, they are already in a very emotional state. And, um, yeah. you know, part of it is one of the things in our firm that we're, where I work at that we're very, very mindful of is sort of the emotional um, amygdala hijack. So when our emotions take over, our, you know, it's your thinking brain. Your thinking brain kind of goes by and it's <laughs> all reactive. And so that's yeah. what you've got. This You've got a very divisive political environment. You've got, you know, people very heated about certain people and then or certain uh, candidates or elected officials and then you're aligning your spouse as having the same belief systems or morals or values as someone that you despise <laughs> and then you can't even talk about it because you're just so upset and you're you know right. we do this little thing like this is your thinking brain it is just flipped and it's gone yeah, wow. so there's no conversation right. So I want to I want to I mean, just ask Lene, I mean, I'm sure in the, you know, more than 100 divorces that unfortunately you've had to kind of deal with in your professional career. Is there a way to come back from this? Like, is there a way yeah. to mediate around How it? Maybe? Learn from this? Yeah. Or, or is there a way to just avoid coming yeah. to I don't want to dissuade people from business, doing business with you, but I'm just saying, is there a way to like <laughs> not see you in divorce court? Right. Lisa, I am very happy for you to dissuade people from doing business with me. I'm not, <laughs> not an advocate for you divorce. you got plenty of business. <laughs> right. right, yeah. Unfortunately, it's one of those things that's a sad topic. It's around, I think, um, you know, if you're having these issues, I mean, find a way to talk about it. If you can't talk about it between the two of you, get someone involved, get a counselor, because mm -hmm. it's not really about my husband loves Trump and he's crazy and I, I love Hillary and how can you not? It's really about you're aligning that person with that belief system. And so you're losing respect for them and you're not able to communicate and find commonality as to, okay, we don't see things the same, but there's gotta be somewhere where we come together and you're probably not this monster um, that I'm aligning you with or whatever. And so find a counselor or, I don't know, read a book together that addresses communication. There's a book called Crucial Conversations. You know, get that book and do that book right. together. I mean, right. How you're going to talk about it, fight for your marriage. I mean, I, yeah. don't I let something like advice. politics divide you. You know, very don't, good don't, advice, Lene. it's not worth it. It's yeah. not worth it, and it's very expensive <laughs> road to go it. down, oh, Lene. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys.